played it for her, he played it for me. Well, I don't think I can remember. If she can stand it, I can. Play it. Yes, boss. Every time I look at this poster, these thoughts come to mind. Bogey and Ingrid in the ultimate romantic movie, and of course, the most watched and beloved Hollywood film. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. In 1992, I produced a documentary on the co-writer of Casablanca, Howard Koch, you must remember this. Because of it, I think I have a few insights that I would love to share with you. Here, of course, I'm assuming that all of you have seen Casablanca. Well, one woman called me up not long ago, a stranger. She said, you know, I just saw Casablanca for the 46th time, and it means more to me than anything in my life. It's still the same old story, a fight for love and glory, a case of do or die. The world will always welcome love as time goes. You have a really perfect marriage between character and structure. You have people who are essentially what they do. And especially in this day and age, it's a very attractive world to visit where there is so much that we call subtext or so much that is hidden or so much that is devious. In this film, the people, you identify the people by what they do not by what they say or by what they think about themselves or anything like that, but they actually act according to who they are. And I think that's a very rare, rare quality in a story, and that the story works so well based on people behaving this way. You said before that the Epstein brothers worked on a new script for Casablanca. What was the original story of Casablanca the, before the Epstein brothers? Uh, the original story was a, a tropical romance. It had very little to do with what you saw tonight. Epstein's gave it an altogether new direction. Casablanca needed to be done. It had some life of its own, and we were more or less conveyors just to get it to the screen. Exceeding all expectations, Casablanca won the Academy Award for Best Picture, with Michael Cortez for Best Director, the Epstein brothers and Howard Koch won for writing the best adapted screenplay. The other thing about it is, and I think it's true of a lot of, in a lot of Howard's films, is that there is ultimate, ultimate romantic quality to Casablanca. And that, when I say romantic, I mean there's this extraordinary longing when you watch it for what might be but cannot be. You must remember this A kiss is just a kiss A sigh is just a sigh I believe that people go back to look at Casablanca again and again because they want to see if there is any way in the world that Rick and Ilsa can be together at the end of that film. And of course they cannot. And when two lovers woo They still say I love you on that you can rely. Behind in the back row are the various character actors. First on the right, Conrad Veidt. Hello, get me the radio tower. Put it down. The evil Nazi who in real life was anything but. He is best remembered for his role in the groundbreaking silent film The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari of 1920. Next to him, Peter Lore, the Austro-Hungarian-born American actor who plays Ugarte. Poor refugees who must rot in his place if I didn't help them. Lore caused an international sensation in the German film M of 1931, directed by Fritz Lang. Lore also left Germany when Adolf Hitler came to power. He went on for the rest of his life playing the role of that creepy guy. Rick, I hope you are more impressed with me now. 
Next, we see the crooked club owner, Signor Ferrari. Sidney Greenstreet, a British actor who did not work in films until he was 62. He's best remembered for his films with Bogart and Laurie, including The Maltese Falcon in 1941, and of course Casablanca, and Passage to Marseille in 1944. Finally on the left, we have Claude Rains, Captain Louis Renault, whose career spanned several decades. I'm making out the report now. We haven't quite decided whether he committed suicide or died trying to escape. He appeared in classic films such as The Adventures of Robin Hood in 1938 and with Bergman in Alfred Hitchcock's Notorious in 1946 and on to David Lean's Lawrence of Arabia in 1962. Make it ten. I'm only a poor corrupt official. Finally, the question came down to the ending, which of two endings. They didn't shoot two endings, but there was a debate. Hurry, you missed that plane. Looking at you, kid. 